good YouTube Never know you two here back again once again and tonight people today we are here for episode number 94 of our Pokemon Violet let's play here on the channel it has been what a month two months something like that since our last episode and I knew and I think everyone knew we would be back to this let's play eventually of course because of the Pokemon day direct yesterday the brand new walking awake and what's the other one what's the other one called iron leaves uh, I don't know why I can't remember the word fucking leaves but anyways walking wake and iron leaves are here and i think we should go and snog them if you guys are hyped for some more pokemon violet and of course if you like to show your supporters a proud one of the night be nice and make sure like button down below for us because you're already no your supporters greatly appreciated uh, i've tried like my hardest to keep up with like violet news and shit and i think i missed out on greninja I think I don't I don't I don't know I load I loaded this game up and I picked up the controller and I was like oh my god what do I do I completely forgot the controls. <laughs> Anywho, let me know what you guys thought of the Pokemon Day announcements and the DLC and all else in the comment section below. I still want to know what the fuck is that big old blocked out area in the northeast of Paldea? Is that where the first DLC is gonna be at? And what the fuck's up? With the DLC being eight months away, who da? I ain't never heard nobody release a DLC that far in advance. People normally announce video games that far in advance, so this DLC better be fucking bananas. Wonder what that bitch could be. I don't want to do that raid. Fuck that. Oh my god. <gasps> god damn. Finally we got in this bitch. Oh my lord. I've been sitting here clicking join, 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 join. I just can't join fast enough. What the fuck? Um, I don't know what fucking Pokemon to bring for this. What the fuck is it? It's a psychic type? Is it just psychic? What the fuck do I do? Uh, I saw a homeboy had this, so I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a bring this motherfucker right here. Yeah. Yeah. All ready to go. Load it up. Alice. Come on, Alice. Let's go. Click the button. Actually, no, don't click the button. You have a Scyther. What are you doing? Oh my god, I'm so excited! It's a brand new Pokemon! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Hey! Now, I copied Homeboy in the lobby, so I hope I brought the right Pokemon and we just don't just get blitzed the entire time. Whoa, is that a shiny? <laughs> I never seen that before, what the fuck? Yo! Whoa, 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 whoa! But why? But why? Where's the speed up button on this? Ah, oh, that's why. Quark drive. Attack was heightened. No, I don't want to do that. Yeah, Kowtow cleaved that hole. Yeah, yeah, Kaka Cloud. Mega Horn. Yeah, King Game with dodge that shit. I love it. Yo, I missed this game. Hold up. Hold up! No, Hector has not beaten Scarlet yet, um, but he's very close. He plays a lot less than you or I would. <laughs> hey! It's not fucking cool. But he's very close to uh, getting to the end, and he's excited about the DLC as well. So hopefully he gets back into it, and we can snag those uh, final Paradox Mons. No, our dex is still not complete. I know, I know, I know. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Um, but we will get it there, uh, either by way of Hector or, <laughs> we may or may not have already started recording our peach lock, but you didn't hear that from me. You didn't hear that from me. Yo, why is this timer dropping so goddamn fast? I'm not even on the field. I'm not even on the goddamn field. Put me back out there. How come this skeleton ain't attacking? I want to see everyone's ping right now. Oh, we ain't winning this raid. We definitely not winning this raid. Hell no, we ain't breaking that shield and getting all that HP gone before this timer runs out. Because I know the moment that I hit the field, it's going to take all 76 seconds from this timer. Oh my god. Oh my god. Gain strength from the fallen. You the only one that died, dog. What you mean? Fuck this thing up. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Well, I guess we bring in Skeledurge next time. Uh, we shouldn't have copied Homeboy in the lobby here. Because uh, I feel like I feel like we're the problem. <laughs> I feel like we're the problem. <laughs> Are we throwing? I don't think I've seen this Skeledurge die once yet. Okay. 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 
got you. I'll get the fuck up out this den. I'll get up out. Yo, don't boot us out the lobby. All four of us are still here. You really gonna make me fight to get back into another lobby just because we were blown out of this fucking cavern? Come on now. Just leave us in the lobby. Let us let us change our party and uh, go again. Let us go again. Come on. Come on. Come on. Be nice. Be kind. Be nice and be kind. Come on. I know you want to. I don't know why I went with that fucking King Gambit anyways. I should have trusted my boy. From day one, he's been here with us in the Paldea region. And we're going to go through all the DLC with his ass, too. Ah. No, of course not. Okay. Back to the fucking menu we go. Ugh. Holy fuck. Hold on, let me change my mods. This is a water type, right? So we need a big fearsome dragon. I mean, a... Uh, Electric type? I was gonna say dragon because I'm thinking of an electric dragon. Uh, we ain't got no fucking uh, none of that shit, dog. None of that shit. Where the where the where the big boy at? Hey, it's gonna be you, dog. We clicking electro drift. All ready to fucking go, bro. No, dog. Don't bring that. Don't no, yo. Don't bring the settlement. Please don't bring a fucking peak yo, dog. I want to win, bro. I want to win. Do you know how long I've been sitting here trying to even just get into one of these raids? Bro, I just want to win. Please don't bring the goddamn Pikachu. Dog, please don't bring the Salamence. Dog, please do not bring the Skeledurge. Do you not see the water droplet right there? Uh, okay. All right, y'all. Pray for me. I really want this Pokemon. <laughs> and I actually didn't even mean to click on this raid. I was just refreshing the raids, and this one popped up first instead of Iron Leaves. So, okay. Um, I, I mean, I know he's a he got dragon type moves, but I I don't I don't I, I don't think I got a, a stronger electric type than right now, you know. Yeah, up that quirk drive, up that quirk drive. I know you clicking sunny day because you got that new move. Oh, and your ability too. Oh, I forgot about that. What the fuck? Uh, okay, okay, okay. We ain't stressing. We ain't stressing. Yeah, yeah. Fuck this thing up. Yeah! Fuck this thing up! Yeah! That's what we like to see! Okay, here it comes. It's the end. <laughs> here it comes. It's all game over now. Bro, who are you hydro steaming? I'm gonna say it better not be me. Fuck this thing up. He paralyzed too. I don't wanna see you move for the next three turns, dog. No shield neither. That's some whack shit. Don't be shielding. Yeah, Electro Drift fucking you up, dog. Yeah. What? Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. That makes it harder. That makes it so much harder. Oh, my lord. Why don't you drop my attack right before you put up a goddamn shield? Terastalize to stop walking wake. No. No. Fuck this thing up, dog. Shatter that shield. One hit. Wow. That did nothing. That did absolutely nothing. Yo, just kill me. Kill me. Kill me so my attack can be reset, please. Alright. Take off half the time bar, too, while you at it. Go ahead. Watch that chunk drop. Look at that. That's insane. That's fucking insane. That's fucking insane, dog. I don't, I don't care. That's fucking insane. Who's using thunder? Is it the Pikachu? Pikachu's dead. He ain't using no goddamn thunder. Look at this. Time limit is gone. I don't even... I, don't even, I, I die once and the raid ends. What, 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 what the fuck? What the fuck? Three days later.
So let me tell you. <laughs> My feelings towards raids in this game, terror raids, have not changed since the last time we loaded this game up. Um, I did sit down to record, hopefully to record an easy, nice little terror raid session. And ah, oh, god damn. That first session that we sat down and recorded where the episode started, it was probably about uh, two hours of me sitting here trying my hardest to get into a raid with competent people <laughs> that know how to battle in raids. I mean, yeah, I'm not trying to go crazy bananas and be a, a negative Nancy over here about it, but I don't know. I just, I feel like there are so many aspects of terror raids in this game. Like so many aspects or the, the mechanics of terror raiding that are just could have been done so much better that's a great way to put it it just could have been done so much better let me tell you i i, I felt like half these raids that i first of all not before we even get to half first of all <laughs> like 90 percent of the raids i try and get into the game says you cannot join the raid could not join the raid could not join the raid now i don't know if that's an internet thing i don't know if that's a terror raid thing i don't know if that's just because you know uh, the mons are new and there's tons of people trying to get them or whatnot, but oh my god What an agonizing experience and it even got to the point where um, I had to disconnect from like I could do one raid 
and then I, it would not put me in any more raids. I could not connect to any more. I had to disconnect from the internet, reconnect, and then I could do a raid. I had to do that one raid at a time. Oh my lord. I don't know. I, I, I feel like that's not a me internet type of thing because, I mean, the internet works on everything else. So why, how come it's just Pokemon that's acting up like that? How come it's just terror raids that are acting up like that? But either way, we eventually got the job done. Um, I decided to play at a different time of day. Um, so I was up late last night playing through and in like the first 20 minutes I got into a walking wake raid where I Like everyone brought mons that were super effective and we won Imagine that like step one in Pokemon like imagine that holy fucking shit Oh my lord, I have seen everything like I felt like I was playing with like day one Pokemon go players like Holy shit. It was awful. It was agonizing trying to do this and I understand that like the idea is to team up and group together And it sure it'd be easier with a group of people that are all on the same page But ultimately what percentage of the player base do you think is that like realistically? Do you think is that? It is the terror rating experience in Scarlet and Violet is awful. It is awful but we got the walking wake, which I absolutely love and adore. I think it's an incredible design. Not really sure how I thought Suicune was born out of the ashes or whatnot, but maybe maybe all the walking wakes went extinct and Suicune was just, I don't know, a recycled DNA matter or something? Who knows? Anyways, <laughs> anyways, uh, walking wake is super duper fucking dope. I love it. Uh, every day it feels like I should have played Scarlet first. <laughs> Why why y'all shit on Violet this bad? It's the better color, damn it! But Pooch Lock coming soon, okay? Pooch Lock coming soon. It's coming soon. Uh but Walking Wake is super duper dope. Hydro Steam I think is so awesome. Uh him spamming Noble Roar in Terror Raids is kind of eh, it's whatever, but we got the job done. Somebody brought a fucking Pikachu to one of the Walking Wake raids that we did. Like, what is wrong with you, dog? Like what you're like you're wasting everyone else's time, but you are also wasting yours like <laughs> you are also wasting yours uh, Iron leaves. I mean, I don't know. I'm not the you, you guys know. I'm fucking love Terrakion Terrakion I think is one of the best mons ever made so I guess Verizon in my opinion gets a little bit of love off the side from that just by association But I, mean, I don't hate Verizon. I'm kind of just like middle of the road about it. Like it's a mon it exists um, but it's cool that they snagged some mons that are it's it's kind of like mega evolution You know like they snagged some mons that really needed the the highlight uh, the, Or the spotlight I should say in the attention and then there are other mons like I don't know Salamence They just love that mon. Holy shit <laughs> They got both of them now. That I'm thinking about it uh, But I thought it was cool I'm not trying to say that Verizon's irrelevant or anything like that But I think I think it was a nice little neat pick to add as a paradox mon um, and as middle of the road as I feel about this mon, I, I gotta say the design is actually, I feel like it's pretty accurate to what robots look like today. Like, I mean, look at those front legs. Like, what the fuck? What the actual fuck? But this motherfucker clicking swords dance in terror raids, it, like turn one, if the iron leaves click swords dance, like I just give up. Like, I, can I leave? Can I, it's gonna take me another 10 minutes to get into another raid. Can I get started on that now? Like, come on. But, got it done. Got it done. We used our uh, Golden Go. I thought his name was Goldengo. <laughs> we used our Golden Go, who is now actually where? Where did I put him at? Where he chilling at over here? Show me where you at, dog. You in the Gimme Gulag? Show me where you at. Did I leave you down here? He's level 98. He used everything we had to get him leveled up because I was tired. Tired of getting to these raids. And even then, even I think I think the one that we won against the Iron Leaves, I think two people, another person brought a Golden Go. And someone brought, um, is it Fluttermane? What's the mis mischievous paradox form? Either way, I was just so happy that I got into a lobby with competent gamers and we got the job done. And it was so easy too. It was so easy. Like if one person doesn't bring a mon that is appropriate for the raid, you're just gonna get smacked the entire time. The entire fucking time. I used um, our Miraidon for Walking Wake. And in that one too, someone else brought another Miraidon and we got the job done. I did one of these, somebody's bringing a Coridon, all this shit. Dog, no, 
No, no, no, no, no. I got into one lobby and somebody had a Breloom until like the three second mark. And I was like, there's no fucking way we're about to go into this battle against this psychic terror type Pokemon and you gonna bring this shit. What the fuck? Anyways, we got the job done. And it was uh, the first time, for the first time, I'm just gonna chalk it up to, it was a lot of people online. There was probably a lot of people scrambling trying to get the new mons and we just didn't get the cream of the crop with us. Um, but um, last night when I actually did sit down to go ahead and, uh, whoa, dog, stop, chill, 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 anybody ask you all that? Uh, but last night when I actually did get to sit down and play, uh, it was not that awful. It was a much better experience. But overall, come on now. Like 90% of the games, 90% of the raids are you cannot connect. And then when you do finally connect, you have to get through the other 90% of people that don't bring the right Pokemon. And then you got to deal with, you know, I think there was one turn that we had against this Iron Leaves where it clicked two, no, it cleared all of our stat changes, all of its stat changes. Oh, just its negative ones, by the way. All of its stat changes. Uh, it stole our Terror Orb energy. It got a shield and attacked twice. I've never in my life felt so disadvantaged in a video game than when I do a Terror Raid in Scarlet and Violet. Holy shit. But, of course, this is all a part of the brand new DLC that was just done. Y'all's doing what? Is everybody hyped and excited for some new DLC? We only have to wait eight months for it or seven months for it or whatever, which... If it's coming out next fall, then that makes me feel like we're not going to get a new game next fall, which is okay. It's okay. You know, I touched on this a little bit in Late Night Emerald. Um, but please, uh, Game Freak, don't feel like you have to be uh, Activision. You don't have to be Call of Duty. We don't need... I don't need two teams working on two games. Have a team for side games. Have a team for main games. And take your time. You make games... You have made games that have stood the test of time. Literally. We're playing through Emerald right now. You have made games that have stood the test of time when you do it right. But when you rush the game out and you do all this silly, goofy nonsense, then all of a sudden, you're not doing it right. And you you, you don't make games that stand the test of time. And uh, I don't know. I just, I just, I, if we don't get a game, maybe we'll get a remake, fifth gen remake. I don't know, maybe. Um, but if the DLC is all we get, I will be okay with that. I have faith in Game Freak, even after the uh, negative response from Scarlet and Violet. I mean... Out of how many main series games do we have now and they have one that kind of sort of under delivered it's not like anything that happened in the game was game breaking you know if you get a, gl a graphical glitch in your game the game auto saves every fucking 60 seconds so it's not like you're gonna lose something major I mean it would suck if you caught like a shiny mine you've been working for but no it doesn't save after every battle anyways uh, it, in my opinion I don't think it was awful but I definitely think they should have spent some time, some more time on the games, and come out with a crisper product. So I'm not entirely upset with Scarlet and Violet. I think they were wonderful games. I think the best Pokemon games we've been given in a long, long time. Um, but yeah, if this is all we're gonna get this year is DLC, because you know, normally you don't announce DLC eight, nine months in advance, unless you got like a season pass and you have a schedule of DLC drops. Um, but they said fuck it y'all ain't getting shit. This motherfucker ain't coming out till November But we want your money now give it to us now uh, But anyways the DLC is coming <laughs> Hidden treasures of area zero for Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet Hidden treasure of area zero is coming You'll be able to adventure for even longer and delve even deeper into the world of Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet with this DLC Hidden Treasure of Area Zero is a new uniform set. Oh my god. But the whole reason I wanted to bring this part up, even though all of this is just useless. While this tale is split into two parts, they link together to tell a connected story. Which is interesting. I I, I, I kind of like that idea. Um, but it has me have more questions. <laughs> I, it, it makes me have more questions. Uh, because it says... In order to begin part one of the Teal Mask, you will have to have begun your treasure hunt in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. The start of the treasure hunt occurs after about three hours of gameplay, right? In order to begin the main part of, in order to begin the main story of part two, the Indigo Disc, you will have to have reached the ending of your Pokemon Scarlet or Pokemon Violet game and completed the main story of part one, the Teal Mask. So we have one DLC that we can go to at any time, and another DLC that you have to have finished the game for. Uh, but I mean, I guess it makes sense. 
I get now, now that I'm saying it out loud, this is part one of Teal Mask is a school trip will take you to the land of Katami, which what happened to that giant rock to the northeast of Paldea? I thought that was supposed to be Kalos. We just gonna leave this giant black rock in the game forever? That's it, it's just gonna be there. I, did did everyone get wise to it? And Game Freak was like, no, 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 no. Rush out the next one. Bring us the next one. Let's scrap that cow shit. We'll do that in the next year. <laughs> but I guess if it's a school trip, you could take it at any point in the school year. So once you begin your adventure, once you begin the school year, then you can go. Um, but Indigo Disc, you'll be traveling to Blueberry Academy, which I, I guess exchange student status. We only have to save the fucking world to get that, I guess. A sister school of your own academy, the Blueberry Academy, by the way, which at first caught me off guard because we have the Uva Academy. Uh, you know, everything's in Spanish. So why isn't the, how do you say Blueberry in Spanish? Is it Mora? Something like that? Am I remembering that right? I feel like that's right. Anyways, how come it's not called that? Why do they just straight up refer to it as the Blueberry Academy? Is it because it's not in Paldea, so they don't speak Spanish? Are we going to a different region? What region are we going to in the Blueberry Academy? I want to know. Why don't they not call themselves in Spanish? Why do they not call themselves? Why do they not? Why, why is their name not in Spanish? <sighs> I say one word in Spanish and then they just can't speak in English anymore. Uh, but <laughs> I think all the graphics and everything for it looks super duper dope. Isn't it? I feel like it's so weird that we're talking about DLC and this is a part of the Let's Play that the DLC will be a part of. Ah! Ah, ah, ah. In part one, the Teal Mask, you'll be chosen as one of the students to take part in a school trip that is held each year in collaboration with another school. It will take you to the land of Katami, Kitakami, which, uh, what region is that in? Where does that exist? Is this like the Savai Islands? Like it's just, it's just out there somewhere. It's not officially a part of Paldea. Are we going to have Kitakami forms? What the fuck? A great mountain towers over the land of Kitakami, and the people live at its base. It is a place of tranquil natural expanses featuring rice patties and apple orchards. A new and different experience compared to the Paldea region. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yo, this one sentence. It is a place of tranquil natural expanses. Yo, Paldea, they ain't got that shit. You ain't never seen this shit before. Featuring rice patties and apple orchards. I mean, hey, to be fair, I ain't seen no rice patties in Paldea. <laughs> a new and different experience compared to the Paldea region. But I have so many questions now because they're highlighting that. So what is this? What region is this based off? What are these legendary Pokemon based off of? You know what I mean? Like, uh, and on top of that, is this, uh, it, it seems um, Asian inspired. So are the... What the fuck are they called? The sealed legends? The ones that you had to collect the stakes for? You know, they were all Asian inspired. Was that hinting towards this? Will they have something, a part to play in this? Or am I just like way off here? I don't know. I just, I, it just occurred to me. Setting abroad at Blueberry Academy where Pokemon battling flourishes. Oh, so they down. They down. Let's go. In part two of the Indo Disc, you will travel to your Academy sister school, the Blueberry Academy, as an exchange student. Unlike your Academy, with its long and storied history, <laughs> boring, Blueberry Academy is a school that was established in recent years, and its curriculum puts a particular emphasis on Pokemon battling. Most surprisingly of all is the fact that most of the school's building is located under the ocean. You will take part in classes, interact with the local students, and experience school life in this unusual Academy. I guess we ain't going outside in this one, huh? <laughs> the other DLC, they made sure to point out all the time. Oh, we outdoor adventure, outdoor project. Out. Nah, we are under the sea. <laughs> we are under the sea. Uh, but in all honesty, I'm more so looking forward to playing the Indigo Disc than the Teal Mask. That doesn't mean I'm not interested in it because, you know, these legends, they look, well, three of them look kind of interesting one of them kind of it just okay uh in part one the teal mask you'll put on a traditional jinbei outfit and take part in the festival that's held annually in the village in part two the indigo disc you'll don the uniform of blueberry academy as an exchange student and get a taste of student life at a new school wow i like it but i'm not changing my clothes <laughs> The Jinbei, see, even that's what I like more. I mean, I, I, I like it. I like it. I like it. It's very outdoorsy. 
But this one, hell yeah. I'm ready to whoop somebody's ass. Let's go. Look like we're getting ready to go to space. Or under the sea. <laughs> under the sea. As your adventures unfold, you'll meet a variety of characters. Let's meet Kieran and Carmine, a brother and sister who appear in both Part 1, The Teal Mask, and Part 2, The Indigo Disc. Wow. These two call Kitakami home, but they attend Blueberry Academy as students. Plot twist! What? Carmine, the elder sister of the pair, is strong-willed and can be a little selfish, but she always looks out for her little brother, even if she isn't the best at showing it. Word is that she can be chilly toward people from other regions. Is that a nice way of saying, like, she don't, she don't like foreigners? Like... Aren't you going to an international academy? What the fuck? Her little brother, Kieran, has a quiet, gentle nature, and he often hides behind his big sister. It seems he's curious about you, though, when you arrive from the Paldea region. See? He's tired of her nasty-ass attitude towards foreigners. No, come on, Carmine. They're not that bad. Come on. Their Pokemon seem kind of cool. Their regional variants are so dope. And she's like, no, shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> It's time to introduce the legendary Pokemon that will be appearing in the hidden area in the hidden treasure of Area Zero. In part one, the Teal Mask, you will encounter Ogre Pond, which dons a fearsome mask. In part two, the Indigo Disc, Terrapagos, Terrapagos, will appear resplendent in its glittering aurea. Resplendent. Oh, I love that word. What the? It just rolls off the resplendent. <laughs> um, Ogre Pond. What are you doing, dude? Like, what are you doing? His shiny, he better look like, uh, what's his face from Crash Bandicoot. Even if you guys swap some of them colors around, that is a huge missed opportunity if you all do that right there. Um, but Ogre Pond, cool, 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 cool. Terrapagos? Let's talk big hard eyes! Oh my god, what a dope-ass fucking mod. And I hope that Terrapagos is not, like, this big. I hope that that motherfucker is, like, massive like swimming around you know like I, I want the school to be on Terrapagos's back and no one realized it until now you know that's that's what I want this bitch to be I want him to be like Groudon and Kyogre combined I want this to be Kyogre's little brother like 100% and I think it's so dope that they put all the typings on his shell does this mean we're not gonna get any more typings because they won't fit on his shell or is he just living in the past? Is it, if we get a new typing, is that going to be in an alternate timeline? Is that going to be, uh, uh, that, where's it going to fit? You're going to put it on the other side of his shell. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I, it's an interesting question to ask. If you're going to put it on there, does that mean we're never going to get any more typings? No, no more sound type? No, no more hope for sound or light typing or time typing? But, you know, those aren't really, those aren't really typings. More so, like, um... You know, like, things exist in time. Thing, I mean, you could say things exist in grass. Things exist in water. But you know what I mean? Like, that is an actual, those are, like, elements. You know, like, something that things are made out of or whatever, forces of nature. Whereas time is, like, how would you have a time Pokemon? Like, their, their typing is time. Light, I could see, kind of, sort of. It would be... I mean, you have dark, so there's no reason why you can't have light. But, I mean, they kind of did that with fairy. It's like kind of like two birds, one stone. They went after dark and dragon with that one typing. So, I would say light would be a little redundant. But, I mean, in all honesty, I would be down for any new typing. But, who knows? Um, either way, Terrapagos, in my opinion, they look... Ogre Pond looks like a grass type. Maybe grass dark. That could just be his color palette. Um, but, Terrapagos definitely looks he should be he i bet you he'll have protean or like super protean or some shit like that but he looks obviously he's a turtle he looks like he's a water type and the blueberry academy is under the sea i mean it's built on his fucking back so i mean come on <laughs> the heroes of kitakami okidogi okidogi <laughs> monkey dory and fenzan whoa fezan de piti fezan de piti fezan de piti I hope I'm saying that right. In part one, the Teal Mask, three Pokemon named Okidogi, Monkey Dory, and Fenzad. Whoa. Fenzand. Fenzand de Piti. appear. So it's a new trio. So we had a quartet, now we got a new trio. 
Fizan Dipiti appear. They are beloved by the people of the village as heroes that protected the land of Kitakami in the past, and stone statues were made in their likeness to express people's gratitude towards these three Pokemon. Um, so, I mean, I'm gonna be honest, they all look like dark types, too. What's this shit hanging off of them? All of them have these, like, little donut things hanging off. I'm guessing that that is representative of something, and I'm ignorant to it. Um, but I think it's, is he supposed to be, like, a cat dog or something? I believe Fat Monkey, because he's a monkey, but then that's not a monkey. <laughs> that's definitely not a monkey. Um, but it would be interesting to know, like, the lore that, uh, all four of them are based off of Ogre Pond... Ogie Dogie, Monkey Dory, and Fenzan. Fez and Ipiti. <laughs> Fezan Ipiti. Um, honestly, out of these three, I think Monkey Dory is probably my favorite. He just looks fucking hilarious. Like, <laughs> I want to be friends with him. I like Fezan Ipiti as well. Um, Okie Dogie, I like his name better than him. I don't hate him. <laughs> I feel like I always have to follow that up. You know, if I say I'm not a huge fan of this mod, it doesn't mean that I hate it. Uh, you know, I'm excited for all of them. I'd love to use all of them. Uh, but I really like the designs of these two more so than Ogie Dogie. I mean, I like Ogie Dogie's design better than Ogre Pond. And his name too, Ogre Pond. But okay. Maybe it'll be these three versus him. Maybe it's like a Swords of Justice situation where there's one of them that is kind of sort of not really a part of the group. But I mean, I guess he was a part of the group. They weren't mean to him or anything, so. Anyways, cool, cool. I like it. I like it. Uh, I really like Fazan de PT as well. Um, your chance to encounter familiar Pokemon that didn't appear in Pokemon Scarlet or Pokemon Violet. What? Um, so they announced that mons that weren't in the game were going to be coming to the game, but I did not realize it was going to be over 230 new Pokemon. Well, they're not new, but new to Scarlet and Violet put into the game. That's a lot. That's a lot of new mons added to the game. Um, and they say you can access it through Pokemon Home, meaning that you could trade it from a different game or just get someone to trade it to you from Scarlet. So that's a lot more Pokemon than I thought that they were going to add. You know, when I saw the trailer at first, they just showed these two little frames, and I was like, really? That's it? Like, Metagross and Milotic? I, would, I wouldn't even consider them on the same level. <laughs> you know, like, one's a pseudo-legendary, and the other is just a good Pokemon. Um, but I imagine that they're just highlighting uh, a different ones, and they got a whole bunch more saved up in store somewhere. Um, but I'm interested to figure out so it's 230 from over 230 so let's just go with the number 230 right so you have 115 new mons in each game and you have to divide that up by like okay well metagross that also means medtang and veldum so that's three of your 115 right there so i wonder how many actual evolution line how many actual sets of new mons are coming um to the game because, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Well, how would you encounter them if the school t is underwater? It's got to be like some... There's got to be like a, a, a portal or a time thing or some something goes on where you're able to travel somewhere. Uh, or, or, or what if the Blueberry Academy, they let you go to like... You can visit this region, that region, but you can only catch so many mons from each region or something like that. I don't know. I don't know, uh, but it's interesting to me because they'll be adding to the Scarlet decks. I mean, the Scarlet and Violet decks with this, which I thought, interestingly enough, Iron Leaves and Walking Wake are not a part of the Scarlet and Violet decks. They don't have a dex number. Like, if you go up here, see, Titan is number six, uh, 362, but they don't have dex numbers, which uh, up until this point, um, you know, I could understand when it came to, like, event mons like charmander and whatnot like you only got that from doing the charizard raid it's not officially a part of the game but it's in here still no reason why it couldn't have a dex number but it's a it's just been added to the game but i think it's so odd that these mons that debuted in this game their inspiration clearly aligns with other mons in this game and you just don't give them the dex number I, I mean i understand it's not the world's biggest issue but you know what i mean I, I like completing the decks <laughs> so it's very important to me it's very fucking important to me god damn it um anyways we did it we finally got them all we finally got them all we finally got 
the walking wake and the iron leaves and of course we had to snag them in luxury balls uh, we'll have to snag our Hisori, uh, Hisuian Zorark as well. You know, we gotta, if we're trying to complete the decks, we gotta include the, uh, all the mods that don't, that aren't gonna have decks numbers. <laughs> but we're gonna snag that as well because, of course, we're gonna be playing through the DLC. And hopefully, probably, most likely, by the time, uh, no, I was gonna say, by the time they come out, we'll have Scarlet done. But it's not like... Are they going to have version exclusives in each of the DLCs? Is there a difference in the... I mean, I, I didn't see anything just now, but I wonder if there's going to be a difference in the DLCs between each game. You know, I feel like they've been so adamant about version exclusives and this and that. Uh, even the picture where they showed the new mods that you could capture. They mentioned uh, you have to move them through home or trading from uh, one of the other two games. So I'm guessing that at least those 230 mons are going to be version exclusive. Don't tell me that's going to be the only difference. I mean, I guess that's kind of... I don't know. I have to do like a quick brain scan through previous Pokemon games. But is Scarlet and Violet the first game that actually had like main story differences between the two games? I mean, you could say black and white, but I mean, that's kind of more so just based on like the legends, you know? So that's not really, in my opinion, you know, you know, like in Scarlet and Violet, you had a different professor, you have entirely different mons at the end, an entirely different post-game storyline, you know, in one, you go back in time, well, you don't go back in time, but one uh, includes back in time, the other includes in the future, so I don't know, it's, I feel like there's much more emphasis on version exclusives in Scarlet and Violet than in previous Pokemon games, so I would only imagine and understand that there would be bigger differences in the teal mask and the indigo disc but now that i think about it i would be pretty pissed if i only had violet and i couldn't play the scarlet exclusive dlc i'd be pretty fucking heated off that so maybe not anyways it's time for me to stop rambling we're done with these terror raids god damn it if you guys enjoyed this little brief return of our Pokemon Violet Let's Play here on the channel. And of course, if you'd like to show your support as a primary in the Navy Nation, make sure to like button down below for us because you already know your support is greatly appreciated. And until we see each other again, thank you so much for your love and light. And please be safe. I'm out this bitch. Bye!